Well, hello, Scrappers. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. Look what I've got here. It's a George Foreman Jr. rotisserie cooker. Why am I showing you this, you might be asking. Well, I will explain. I found this in a thrift store a couple days ago. Got it really cheap. Came with all the accessories. The reason I bought it was because this doohickey right here in it. I've been thinking about building a rotary tumbler for depopulating small parts. I was actually looking online to find a basket like this that I could build a rotary tumbler with. Then I'm in the thrift store and I see this thing and I thought, holy cow, this is a rotary tumbler already built, ready to go. I don't have to do anything, you know, except put small parts like ram sticks in it, turn it on, let it heat up above the melting point of the solder on these things, and they'll bang around as they tumble inside the basket, and all the IC chips should fall off. That was my plan anyway. And here, I've got it, you know, and it only didn't cost me much, just a few bucks, just a few bucks. Go check your local thrift stores. You might be able to find one of these too. Um, I have tested it out to make sure that it works and it rotates, but that's as far as I've gotten. This thing gets wicked hot. The rotation's pretty slow, but I think the parts will still bang around enough to depopulate the chips. So what we're going to do is we're going to try a test run on this. We're going to run a bunch of ram sticks through it and see if it works. Does it work? I don't know. This could be epic or this could be stupid. We'll find out whether it works or not. But, hey, I only have a few bucks invested in this thing if it doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, well, I've got a basket that I can use. Maybe I could add extra heat to this if the internal heating element isn't enough. But I'll tell you what, that internal element gets red hot. And within a minute or two, it's over 300 degrees Fahrenheit in here. So I think it's going to be more than hot enough to depopulate these things. We'll see. So let me get set up for a run. The first thing i got to do is accumulate some more ram sticks. I've got a bunch of them. But uh, on this one, I've trimmed the, the gold fingers off. I'm going to trim the gold fingers off the rest of them before we do the run because um, I don't want the solder, once it melts, to run across the gold and entomb it. So let me get started trimming up some uh, ram sticks. Yeah, my normal modus operandi for depopulating circuit boards is to run through my kiln. And I have a lot of videos of that. I'll put a link to one in the upper right. You can check that out. That works really great for bigger circuit boards. Um, I have to put these smaller boards, like ram stick boards, in some kind of basket to hold them so they don't just get lost in the big kiln. And I've always wanted to have some way of tumbling that basket so I don't have to reach in to that super hot kiln with a Kevlar glove up to my shoulder to shake that basket from time to time. So I was going to build something that would rotate and uh, depopulate these small boards without me having to manually intervene. Well... I think I found something that'll do it for me without me having to actually build it. So first step though, like I said, is I got to cut, I'm going to close crop the uh, gold fingers off of these ram sticks because that is a problem I have had in the past with depopulating stuff with heat is the solder will run across the uh, the gold plating and then the gold platings entombed underneath the solder and it's hard to get to so this is going to take a little while i got a bunch of these i will probably peel these labels off too because they're going to be kind of a pain in the butt later on in the process they'll probably just char and stink maybe catch fire i don't know so we'll get them off I'll trim up a bunch more of these uh, ram sticks. It goes quicker when I'm not jawboning at the camera. Just head down, working, and uh, then we'll get started actually testing whether this latest brilliant of idea of mine is actually going to work. Okay. Okay. Well, I think for initial tests, this is enough. I've got a lot more ram sticks than this, but I think just for an initial test to see if it works, that's enough. Does work? Well, a whole lot more will be going through there in the future, I'm sure. And look, I've got all these lovely close-cropped 
fingers now for uh, recovery of gold from them later on, probably in another video. And I'll just let these accumulate. Okay, so let me uh, rearrange stuff on the bench, get the, uh, the rotisserie unit plugged in, and uh, we'll get some stuff in the basket and tumbling and see what happens. All right, I guess it's time to find out whether this thing's going to work or not. We're all going to find out together because I haven't tried this yet. So we're going to put some ram sticks in here. I'm not sure how many is too many. I guess we'll find out here. And this latch is loose. Let me bend these a little bit. That's a little better. Put this in here. It's all loaded up. Let's close the lid and turn it on. I'm going to give it 45 minutes on the timer, although I doubt it'll take that long. We'll see. And there they are tumbling. Put the microphone over here so you can hear it. Yeah, so we're working. We're working, so we'll see how that, see how it does. Let's see if this stuff jams up. I can see that some of them, no, nah, they're moving. I thought they were jammed up in there. They're tumbling pretty good. Okay, we'll just let it run. See what happens. Okay, this has only been running for a few minutes. The uh, heating element in the back, which you probably can't see, is glowing a very dull red. There is no temperature adjustment on this. It's just a timer for how long you want this thing to cook. Let's take a... Uh, I mean, I can feel the radiant heat coming off this thing from two, three feet away. It's getting hot. A lot of, ooh, a lot of heat coming out of the vents on the top. Um, it smells hot. Let's take a look and see... Internal temperature. Well, it's jumping around a little bit, but I would say it averages out to about 300 Fahrenheit. So we'll let it we'll let it continue to just spin and see if parts start coming off shortly. Check the temperature again in a little bit. I don't think the stuff in the baskets really had a had time to warm up yet basket itself maybe I don't know we'll see we'll just let it spin check it again in a bit so it's been a little while longer I haven't really been timing this carefully I guess 15 minutes total by the timer on the thing um, what I've noticed in the last few minutes is the sound of the tumbling which I'll give you another listen to has gotten a lot quieter like the boards are getting softer in there in the heat well, there's a lot of heat coming off that glass, too. But yeah, the tumbling noise has gotten a lot softer. I can't really tell if any ICs have come off the boards yet. It doesn't really look like it. But it's kind of hard to see in there. Some of those boards didn't have ICs on both sides, so... I don't hear any small things tumbling around yet. Let's uh, get another look at the temperature. See if we can get something a little more consistent this time. Not so jumpy. Looks like 330, 333, roughly. So that's pretty hot, but maybe not hot enough to melt the solder. I might have to make some adjustments to this thing, see if I can get a little bit hotter. Maybe block some of the vents on top. I imagine it has a thermal cutout if it gets too hot. Most consumer equipment does. I think it's a UL requirement. So if I block the vents, it might overheat and shut down. But you know what? I can find that doohickey and bypass it if I have to. So uh, maybe I'll try blocking some of the vents on top and see if that helps. Okay, I have put a thin sheet of aluminum... Just sit it on top here, blocking the top vents, and we'll see if that gets the temperature up any. Um, like I say, it's just sitting there. If this works, I'll screw it down so it's more permanent. 
But for now, it's just sitting there. We'll see if the temperature goes up any. Or if the thing shuts down. We'll find out. Okay, it's been a few more minutes with my makeshift heat shield up on top there blocking the holes. Let's take a measure of the temperature inside again. Now the heat shield's going to fall off as soon as I open the door because it's not secured. I can see, oh, you know what? It's working. I can see, I can see ICs that have come off the RAM chips in there. They're tumbling around. There's a bunch of them. Yeah, so it's working. They're coming off. Okay, maybe it just needed a little extra heat. Let me let me see what it's like. The heat shield. Ooh, that's hot. See what the temperature inside's like. It's over 400 now. So it looks like it's getting to the point where it's melting the solder. Excellent. Let me put that heat shield back on. That is a hot piece of aluminum now. Whoa, whoa, that is hot. Wow. But yeah, okay, so it's working. I see the chips coming off. Get the pile of them in here. Yep. I know from experience that RAM chips are among the hardest things to depopulate. The solder they use on them seems to have an exceptionally high melting point. So, but it seems to be working. My next idea, if the heat shield didn't work, would be to add some supplemental heat. See, it's got this grease drawer down here. Oh, look, there's a few chips in the grease drawer. And what I was thinking about doing was just uh, putting the end of my propane torch in there to add a little extra heat, but I think it's working. So I'm going to let this go for a little while longer. I mean, it's not super fast, but on the other hand, it's completely hands-off. I've been doing other stuff for the past half hour or so while this has been running. You know, so if this thing will depopulate parts for me without me having to actually do it. That'll free me up to do other stuff and multiply my productivity. I'm going to let this run a little while longer. We'll stop it, cool it down, and see just how well it did. How much more we got on the, t on the clock? We got about 20 minutes left on the timer. Okay. So 20 minutes. So we've been going about 25 minutes, but not very long with the secondary heat, heat blocker on top. So that's, that hasn't been long at all with that on there, and it seems like the chips started coming off immediately after I put that on. Okay, so this is working. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I see more and more chips in there. So we'll just let it go for a few more minutes and stop it and see what we got. All right, so it's been about another five minutes, and what I'm seeing in there is a whole lot of depopulated RAM sticks and a bunch of chips rolling around in the bottom of the basket. All right, so let me turn this thing off and let it get started cooling down. Let me knock this heat shield off. That'll help it, help it cool off quicker. Probably going to be burn marks on my bench back there. Oh, well, I'll repaint it again. So uh, let's see what we got here. Yeah, that's probably not showing up, but uh, there's a bunch of chips laying down in there. There's some down in the grease tray. I'm going to leave the door open, let this thing cool off, and once it's cool enough to handle, we'll open it up and see what we got inside. All right, it's only been a few minutes, but I'm really eager to see what we got here, so hopefully these gloves will keep me from getting burnt too bad. It's down to about 230 degrees after leaving the door open. So let's uh, take a peek and see just how well we rotisserized. He's ran. Oh, yeah. Look at it, all the chips coming out. Wow. There's more in there. Come on out. Everybody out. All right. That's out. There's some in the, uh, well, some, some escaped just now. And there's some in the grease tray down here, as well as it looks like all the little MLCCs and resistor networks came off, too. So, hey. This works. Like I said, it's not the fastest way for sure, but it does work. Look at that. Totally depopulated, totally depopulated. Let's see. Yeah, totally depopulated. Looks like it works good. Yeah. I'm liking it. And I think I can probably put a lot more uh, sticks in there, maybe close to double as many as I did. 
and it'll probably go a lot quicker with that uh, aluminum up on top blocking the, uh, the air vents on the back so it gets over 400 degrees in there. That seems to be what it takes to melt the solder on these things, getting over 400 degrees. So, yeah, so it's not the quickest way in the world, but like I said, it's totally hands-off. I don't have to do anything other than load it up and walk away. So that's great. I've been working on other stuff. I'm over here scrapping out servers while this thing's running, and I'm getting a whole bunch more RAM sticks out of them that I'm going to have to run through it. So excellent, excellent. So I will get to work reworking my... Uh, uh, blocking system up here so I can get it on there and it'll stay on there and I'll still be able to open and close the door and um, that'll keep the heat in really well and uh, the the parts should come off a lot quicker and it's not just ram sticks I've got a lot of other little um, PC boards that I need to uh, depopulate uh, my friend Rick in Georgia sent me a whole bunch a whole big box full of little boards with gold bearing components on them that need to be depopulated. I mean, I've probably got 50 pounds of these little boards. They'll fit in this basket and they'll bounce around in there and get depopulated. So great. Again, it's another hands off thing. I could just load the basket up with some of these little boards, start it up, walk away, come back in half hour, maybe less, and have a basket full of depopulated boards and little parts. Oof. I'm going to be getting a lot of gold out of these RAM chips in the future. I am one happy camper. So run, don't walk down to your nearest thrift store, Goodwill, Salvation Army, whatever. See if you can get one of these things. Minor modification on it, and it will depopulate small boards for you hands off. Give it a shot. I'm happy. I think you'll be happy too if you get one. So anyway, if you're happy with this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos. There'll be more videos in the future on, uh, well, this might appear in the future in other videos, but certainly lots of uh, depopulating gold recovery, silver recovery videos from e-waste. So subscribe to see those videos. Check out my two other channels. I've got two other channels now. I've got, um, I've got Electric Geek 64. If you're at all interested in electronics or retro computing, check out that channel. And if you're into rock hounding, lapidary, that kind of stuff, rock tumbling, check out my other channel, my new channel, Mike's Lapidary and Fossils. Fossil hunting's there, too, so check that out. Um, so anyway, I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.